guys welcome back it's been a hell of a long time since i made one of these youtube videos and a lot has changed but essentially we're two days out of my first competition now when i stopped making videos back in 2018 um i took a lot of them down off the channel and um, there's still a few on there from jesse's show day and we went to iceland but it was the start of my sort of bodybuilding journey now i'm pretty you know pretty much towards the end uh, it's been four years of uh, you know off season after off season small diet break and i'm finally at the point now where i'm two days out of my first competition so i wanted to document it as a standalone video so that in five ten fifteen years time i can look back on this and, and uh, you know remember what it was like so the last four months i've been in contest prep to be honest it's been pretty all consuming as you would imagine um, but we're finally at the final stages now. So I wanted to make sure that I captured it um, and had it for the future. So a lot's happened in the last four years. Um, just to give you an overview, got engaged, bought a house, um, cycled the length of the country, competed in jiu-jitsu competitions, got a new job, started reading, self-development. It's probably too many topics for one video. That's a brief overview sort of the last four years. Um, been balancing bodybuilding within a very busy nine to five corporate job uh, has been tough. Um, but the, the way that I get that done uh, is through breakfast club. So it's it's five o'clock this morning, we're up, we're ready to go to the gym. So I'm actually off work because it's a loading day. So I'm feeding into the shirt. So I want to give myself a time where I could just uh, chill, um, stress-free, get the food in, minimal steps. But yeah, I've been reading this one book. Uh, it's called Snow Leopard by Category Pirates. And just as a brief overview, people can be broken down into sort of three three components with, with media. You can be consumers, you can be curators, or you can be creators. Um, now, I would put myself in the bracket as a, as a consumer, albeit an active consumer, very particular about the content I absorb. Um, but I want to move more into the curation side of things. I read a lot. Um, I implement a lot of these, uh, a lot of what I'm reading into my own life with great effect. Um, and I want to start creating content around that, hence why I've bit the bullet uh, and back on YouTube. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video because this video will be from now all the way up until um, post show with some reflections. So you'll see the result, you'll see the process, uh, what the next two days looks like. Not every detail, because I've got to get every hair off my body, so I'm sure that I won't be on YouTube. Um, but it'll be fun to bring you along and. Uh, and see how we do. Right, that's meal one down. Uh, I've got to get to the gym now. Um, on the plan is pull and biceps. This is the final session um, pre-show. So um, I might do a little bit of delt work and a little bit of chest work, just to ensure that the carbs that are going in today are all going to the right places. Staying away from failure, just basically getting blood in the area and driving the carbs um, to where they need to go. My brain was completely not working in that earlier video where I said I was going to train back and biceps. Today was actually chest, shoulders and triceps. So you'll have to excuse me, prep brain is real. Um, I want to use this time just to talk over these videos and talk about my experience of prep so far. Some positives, some negatives and some things that I've discovered along the way. Um, and I think the best place to start with that is, you know, I work a very busy nine to five corporate job. How do I fit bodybuilding in with that? Um, and obviously prep, contest prep, you know, it has to be a priority in your life if you want to do it well. But I also have probably a bigger priority with my career. And the way that I get around that is I wake up at four o'clock, me and Jess are in the gym at quarter to five. We get everything that we need to get done and then head home. And I'm usually home about half an hour to 45 minutes before work starts. And then I use that time to effectively plan my working day using the one, three, five principle. So one, what is the most important task that needs to happen today? And I usually deal with that first if I can. Then three, what are the three next most important tasks that are gonna help move my career and my success in job um, forward? And then five, 
um, what are five menial tasks that I need to get done today? And these usually just get action last towards the end of the day when my energy is diminishing, maybe fatigue is high, I'm tired. Um, that's when I'll do them. So in terms of prep, then in terms of the positives, um, I've never done something that gives me such laser beam focus in my life. Having low energy in the day and having two big priorities within my career and also within um, contest prep means that I look at everything in a, an extremely clear state as to is this going to help me move forward? If it is, I'll do it. If it isn't, I won't. Um, so it really helps to clarify where you spend your your energy. Um, from a negative side of things, I guess it's you know much the same as as what you would expect: hunger, low energy, tiredness, fatigue. Um, but the one thing that really caught me off guard, I didn't think I would suffer from it so bad, uh, is the food focus. It has been real the last few weeks. Like I find myself scrolling social media, uh, YouTube, looking at food videos, uh, and I know in the long term um, that's obviously not good. So that's certainly a negative. I think from a discovery side of things, just to finish up, bodybuilding is an extremely individual, selfish sport. As an athlete, everything, every, every part of your success is down to you. So what you eat, how you sleep, how you train, your hydration, electrolytes, supplements, everything is down to the individual. Saying that, the guys and girls that are in breakfast club, in the gym, 5 a.m. every day, getting after it and chasing their own sort of goals, whether it be competitive or not, um, has been incredible. There's been days where I've been on my ass, really low fatigue, low energy, high fatigue, um, in a foul mood, and seeing everyone else get after it has really helped me um, to push on it uh, within those times. A massive shout out to the Breakfast Club crew. I appreciate you all. All right, cool. We're back from the gym now. Firstly, apologies if this room has a lot of reverb um, that's not watching it, which is why there might be an echo. Um, so meals one and two have gone down. Um, I've trained, I've been out, I've got steps. Um, and now we're cooking up meal three, which um, if I'm honest, this whole prep I haven't shared uh, much about what I'm eating because it has been the same, same. Um, but this recipe in itself is something that I've looked forward to um, for the entirety of prep and I wish I had found it sooner. Um, so I'm gonna show you. Um, I think first of all, I wanna give a shout out to Becky Dean. It was actually her recipe that I saw on Instagram. Um, I was having oats post-workout anyway and I thought, you know what, that looks lovely. So what we're gonna be making for meal three is oat cookies in the air fryer. So for this recipe, what you'll need is your dry ingredients in one bowl and your wet ingredients in the other bowl. Now, because this is a, um, a loading day, so I'm eating more carbohydrates today than I would on a normal, a normal day as I lead into the show, um, we have some additions in this which are gonna make it enhanced. Um, so for the dry ingredients, you need oats. I've got the, the Morn Flake super fast cream oats, they're lovely. Um, you need a teaspoon of baking powder, some salt. Um, I've got here some sweet ground cinnamon, um, just a dash of that. So that all the dry ingredients go into uh, one bowl. Um, I've also added um, a little bit of stevia uh, sweetener. I've had that throughout the entirety of prep, so it's not going to uh, impact my digestion at all. Now, with regards to binding all of that together um, and making it into like a cookie shake, you need some wet ingredients. And for that, we have 100 grams of overripe bananas. Personally, these aren't ripe enough for me. I like them really brown. Um, you can add a dash of almond milk or water if you're running low on calories. But for today, we have got a very secret ingredient and one in which is uh, making me really excited. And that is soft pitted dates. So as I'm obviously carbohydrate loading today, I needed something that was extremely high carb, but also really low fat. And per 100 grams, of these pitted dates, there are 68 grams of carbs 
and 0.2 fat. And obviously there's a decent amount of fiber in these dates as well. So they're going in. So I've got my wet ingredients here, got my dry ingredients here. I'm gonna mix them up, form them into a cookie shape. Um, and then what you're gonna do is get two sheets of grease proof pa uh, paper, give them a spray with some non uh, one cow um, cooking spray, and then bang them in the air fryer. Now obviously, if you're eating less, you can put them on one, but because of the amount of oats that I've got today, 175 grams, I'm splitting them into two. So I'm having two fairly decent sized oat cookies. And then after they're finished, I actually picked up um, this raspberry jam the other day from Amazon. Um, it's called Good Good Raspberry Jam. And per 100 grams, per 100 grams, get this, of jam, there is only 27 cows. Now obviously, it's one of those, it's almost like the 10 calorie jelly. That's, that's the sort of texture I would say that it is. Um, it's keto friendly, extremely low carb, but at this point in prep, it's a fantastic addition. The cookies come out nice and crispy, and you put some jam on top, and it is just, it's just sensational. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna get it all prepared, gonna mix it together, you don't really need to see that. I'm gonna put it on the baking paper, uh, the grease-proof paper, bang it in the air fryer, and I'll show you the final result. Now I'm pretty certain that this wouldn't win any beauty contests, and like I said, with regards to the jam, having 27 cows per 100 grams, it's not gonna be the sweetest, it's not gonna be the nicest. Merry Berry certainly wouldn't be a fan, but when you're on prep, this is absolutely like heaven. So what I've got here is, so what I've got here is the apricot jam on one and the raspberry on the other. Now listen to this. I'm going on like I haven't had this before, right? But the figs, sorry, the dates that are in here are just sensational. If I wasn't on prep, the amount that you could do with these, you could add pretzels, you could add biscuits. Apparently mixing it with coconut oil uh, is a game changer. But from a prep side of things, even in off season, if you're looking for like a clean post-workout um, meal, oh, you can't fault them, they're insane. Right, I'm gonna smash these down. I'm gonna chill, watch some Netflix, um, and then do some grooming later. So I'll probably catch up with you all tomorrow. Good morning, it's Friday. Um, one day out, I'm just out on a walk. I've got quite a busy day today. When I say busy, I've got to get my hair cut um, and also get my tan on later. So I'm just trying to get ahead of the day get some of these steps done whilst also walking in the fields just behind our house. Um, last night, just chilled out, got the rest of my meals in. Woke up a kilo heavier, which is to be expected, um, but looking pretty much bang on. So I think we're probably gonna go the same today. So 750 grams of carbs fill up the tank, 10,000 steps, and then dry out later on. Um, last night, oh my God. Nobody told me how much of a ball ache hair removal was gonna be. So I've got such war wounds like wrist. And then you can see my legs. I obviously don't shave um, my legs and arms specifically, but man, it took so long and I'm still not finished. So I'm gonna wait till Jess gets back because I need to get the back of my knees. So, but yeah, I touched on it a bit yesterday um, with regards to that book, Snow Leopard. I'm really enjoying it. So for any of you guys that have a hobby or a passion or an interest, um, I would recommend reading it. Uh, it's a pretty cool book. But there's one more as well, um, Austin Cleon, Show Your Work. It's only about, that big, you could probably read it in an hour. I do all this stuff, I do bodybuilding, got other interests, but I don't particularly share it. And I don't really know why the reason that is, other than like, 
the fear of judgment or people being disinterested. And I think once you get past that and you realize, you know what, it's my interest, I'm doing it for me. I'm putting out the information that might help other people, but more so putting it out because I'm interested in it. It's kind of like a nice little bit of freedom, freeing thoughts that you can really just say and do whatever you want. And I think having an internet presence in 2022 is never a bad thing and you never know, you know where it can lead to. Um, and I think if I think about it more so now, like my niche really is people that work really busy nine to fives, um, but maybe don't feel like they don't have the time um, to follow their passions or to do things outside of work. That feeling of being stuck is a situation that I've been in myself in the past. And I think once you get your habits and routines and environment in a good place, it's so nice just to be able to start every day with like intention to win at work, but also win in the areas that matter to you. Hold that thought. Honestly, if there's one thing that I really haven't enjoyed since starting prep, it's getting steps in, in these fields with these absolute beefcakes. Um, they look cute. They've got these nice little perm, perms on their head. You think, oh, they're so adorable, but they're absolutely nuts. I don't know what their problem is. It's like they're territorial. So yeah, madness. What's going on guys? Uh, I've got to be pretty quiet because Jess is in bed. Um, but we're back from the tan now. So I'll insert some uh, clips above this footage now, but this is the final meal. Um, it's been a pretty manic day, if I'm honest, why I haven't filmed too much. So I went out, got my hair cut, came back, packed all my stuff, um, had some meals, and then got my steps in. Then I had to drive all the way to Telford for my tan. Um, got there at half five, they didn't tan me till seven, so not ideal. Um, but luckily I brought a meal with me in the car, which was a clever idea, so well done, Jack. Um, so I'm back now. It's been seven litres of water today and I've got about 500 mil left. Got my final meal going in, which is a bowl of rice pudding, four rice cakes and four bags of um, sweet chilli snack jacks. So yeah, that is the end of the, the loading phase, I guess. Um, tomorrow morning we'll be up bright and early, checking in with Cal. Um, and then we head to Telford, um, looking like I'm going to be on around one o'clock. Really proud of myself for getting here, um, you know, especially how chaotic life is and balancing a number of things, which we've spoken about in this video already, with work and everything. It's a good feeling to actually finally be here um, and to enjoy it with the people that I care about the most. My brother's come in, uh, Jess obviously come in, there's loads of friends and family um, that will be there, uh, Matt as well. Back in 2018, when I started with Matt, started training with him, um, you know, we always said that we'd be on the stage together, and uh, tomorrow that happens. So I'm absolutely buzzing uh, with that, and he's looking insane. So it'd just be amazing to share the stage with him. Right, I'm going to eat this because I'm flipping starving, even though I've had um, more food than I know what to do with today. Um, and I'll catch up with you all tomorrow for show day. Good morning, it's show day. I'm uh, just pulled up outside my mum's house, waiting for my brother. Um, but yeah, feeling good, feeling good. Checked in with Cal, woke up at five o'clock this morning. Um, after 800 grams of carbs yesterday and seven liters of water, I was uh, half a kilo down. So it's definitely a good sign. We've definitely dried out overnight. Uh, meal one's going in in 40 minutes, so I'm just going to drive now, uh, head towards Telford, probably stop at the services, have meal one. Tan is 8 till 10 for the men, and then we got athlete check-in at 10.15. So yeah, it's time to get it. It's uh, it's show day, it's finally here. It's been a long, you know, a long process thus far. Um, but as I said last night, I'm just proud that I am here. Like, it's it's been... Uh, 
it's been difficult at times, it's been really enjoyable at times and uh, I'm just buzzing to get up there. Um, there's a few people competing today, so you got myself and Matt, we're both doing men's physique tall. Got Big Nick as well, so we're trying to get some footage of him, he's fucking huge. Um, excuse my language. And we've got Neil, Nelly, who's like the uh, the breakfast club dad. The guy, the guy is 50 and he's just an absolute savage. Um, so yeah, I'm buzzing for, for all, to see all those guys compete as well. Jess is heading off to the Telford Foundry Gym. She's getting her session in, she's got her cardio in this morning and then she's meeting me there. And there's so many people going, I've got my best mates going, friends are going, brothers going. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be an exciting day. I'm gonna try and make the most of it and uh, take you along with me. So I'll catch up with you soon. Hello guys, happy Sunday. It is the morning after the night before, as they would say. Um, I've just got back from the gym. I just thought I would get in there uh, this morning just to have a, a pump session, move some of the food around and get a bit of cardio done. Um, but what I wanted to do in this section of the video is really go over um, sh the, the show itself. So some of you might have already seen the result through Instagram. Um, I haven't posted too much. I've just been chilling with Jess and the cat and just relaxing really post-show. Um, but being as this is a standalone video, what I wanted to do is to give my analysis, my summary of how I feel it went, um, specifically with the look that we brought to the stage and generally just the show itself. Um, so I've got some fantastic footage from the show itself, which my brother kindly filmed. So massive thanks, Tom, for filming that. I think one thing to mention before we jump into the actual video itself is um, I don't need sympathy for how it went. Uh, I'm actually incredibly happy with the look that I brought to the stage. There was a few things that on the day that um, that kind of miffed me, which we can go about, which we can go into in a bit more detail. Um, but as like a, an experience in itself, and um, the way that I looked up there, I couldn't be happier. Like it's the best I've ever looked in my life. And I was saying this to Cal last night, like I'm fully at peace with the result. Um, and I think it is warranted and I think it's fair, um, but I'm just overwhelmingly happy with what I brought to the stage. So without any further ado, let's roll the clips and I'll give you my, uh, my overview. Okay, so here we are walking out to the stage. Tell you what, I actually felt pretty incredible. Um, just walking out there and being out there um, in a lineup of guys that are just really fantastic humans. I met them all backstage. You can see here, me pictured in the center. I've got Matt to my left. And I forgot the guy's name left of Matt, um, but he beat Matt in a, a show a few weeks ago. They're both extremely stacked. So at this point I'm thinking, first and second is probably not gonna happen, um, but I might be able to get in for third. Now with regards to the back shots, I'm very happy uh, with how I looked, especially over the last few weeks, I've been trying to get that lower back in, and it certainly was in, albeit not the whole way. I think the one thing that is pretty evident um, is just top line. So like, 
the guys that are, that did place higher than me, they've got such fuller chests and shoulders. And there you go, we can see we skip forward to a clip. They really made us work. I'm absolutely dripping in sweat. And uh, that really did ruin my tan. You can see me there rub my face. Um, but the, the water is just pouring out of me. And uh, so much so that one of the judges comes on with a towel and starts to dry me. Now obviously that's a good thing because you know he's, he's obviously getting rid of the sweat but um, it completely changed uh, my colour and I looked a lot lighter so maybe a bit more washed out. Um, midsection nice and tight. I just feel like I don't look very pumped at this point. I did try and pump up quite a bit backstage. These are the overhead shots. Um, again really happy with my obliques uh, in these shots and this is probably my favourite shot of the, of the whole show. Uh, the money shot, overhead, um, rear, um, back shot. Absolutely loved it. Um, again, this is just to show a bit later in the show, you can see how much tan has been washed off me. Um, I skipped a lot of it out, but um, the kind ladies that were looking after the tan just wiped it all off and I was just so pale in comparison to everyone else. Um, here you can see everyone is blowing, like they really made us work. I think uh, Jess and Tom told me after it was about 12 or 13 minutes we were doing rounds for on the stage and every other class prior to that, you know, was nowhere near um, that amount of time on stage. So it was really, you know, it was a graft for sure. Um, I just thought I'd leave this in. So this is Matt's eye walk. He's probably gonna, <laughs> he's probably gonna hate me for leaving it in. But listen, we've been dreaming about being on the stage together for the last four years, and he just looked insane. Like his his top line is full. His obliques are sharp. Like his arms have really come on. I think he's 23 or 24 pounds heavier than the last time that he was on stage. So and that was two years ago. So the man has absolutely blown up since then. Um, and I couldn't be happier for him. Like he's just an incredible guy and an absolute specimen of a human on the stage. So that, that was Matt's eye walk. And now we've got mine coming up. Felt a bit awkward if I'm honest. Tried to get the crowd in, involved. Uh, little pose at the back and then I think you get four poses at the front. So I started with the standard front shot. Not too bad. Tried to get the lats in there. Probably could have my hips turned a bit more to make the waist look smaller. Then I went for the overhead, um, sorry, the rear shot. In, in hindsight now, seeing the clips back, I probably should have went for the overhead because that was probably my best shot of the day. And then my right oblique shot, that's my favorite one because it's, I don't know why, I just come in a bit tighter on that side. And I threw one more in for good measure. And that was the end of it. Okay, cool. We're back where we started uh, in the office. I know it's been a long video, so if you have stuck around to the very end, um, just know that I massively appreciate you. So thank you so much for that. Thanks for watching it. As I said at the start, this video is definitely a standalone video. I wanted to document it. Um, the whole time that I've been in contest prep and getting ready for the show, I've been using the hashtag finish the job. And that's because I started this journey four years ago with the aim of competing. And I now feel as though I can close that chapter um, of the stage and that I have finished the job. Um, I won't be competing in any future shows. So I've registered for one in three weeks time, um, but based off how I'm feeling at this point and how I felt on the stage, not physique wise, cause I thought I felt, um, I looked fantastic, more so um, doing it for the right reasons. I feel as though I'm completely content um, to leave it at that. That being said, um, I don't just want to scrap the diet, scrap cardio and scrap everything. I think that would probably be a bit inconsiderate and probably a foolish thing to do. So I've booked a photo shoot in for week two of September with Jess. So I've still got a few weeks now where I have a plan, I have something in place that's going to keep me on track. Now with regards to content, so this YouTube channel, my Instagram and anything further uh, that comes out from myself, it's gonna be completely based around something outside of bodybuilding. As I've said from the start, bodybuilding is like one area of my life which I've pursued for four years, but it's not my entire life. In fact, most of my day 
is taken up thinking about things outside of bodybuilding, things like routines, habits, self-development, um, health, fitness, of course they play a part of that. Um, but there's so much more that I'm interested in and areas that I wanna pursue in, in public, basically. So with that, what's the plan moving forward? Well, we finished the competing journey. Um, my plan moving forward now is to support Jess throughout her um, shows coming up in September. She's been there for me since, you know, the very start, obviously, and she supported me massively throughout this prep. I'm gonna do the same for her. Um, I also wanna launch um, a podcast. So Breakfast Club is something that I've been hashtagging for years. It's more than just a hashtag, it is a mindset. Waking up every morning with intention to focus on the areas that are most important to you. So at the moment, I'm working on getting the Breakfast Club podcast um, off the ground. After that, I would like to continue to post some stuff on YouTube in sh much shorter form. I know this is pretty much a 30 minute video, um, but the videos that I wanna make around 10 minutes, and as I said at the very start of, of this vlog, um, around the curation side of things. So areas that I'm actively learning myself, how I'm implementing it in my own day to day and areas in which maybe you want to implement to have some sort of improvements in your own life. I just wanted to say as a final note, a massive thank you to everyone that supported me. So thank you to Jess, thank you to Matt, thank you to my coach Callum, thank you to all of the Breakfast Club pr uh, crew at the Foundry Gym in Dudley. Um, it's been one hell of a ride and it's one that I'll always look back on um, with fun memories, um, but for now, my time with competing at the stage is done and I'm quite happy uh, and content to say that. So thanks so much for watching the video. Um, please do let me know how you found it. I did put a lot of effort into it. Like I said, I had two days off work with the loading days and I just thought, sod it, I'm, uh, I'm gonna film it. A lot of the, the stuff that I've been reading, like the Austin Cleon book, Show Your Work and that Snow Leopard book, they're all about talking about journey over destination. And I thought I owed it to myself to give a really comprehensive overview of the journey so far. And the destination obviously being the show at the weekend, which was, which was incredible. So thanks so much and hopefully I'll catch you all very soon.